Okay, so let, let's look a little bit more about uh, at what happens after elastic deformation. So here's an elastic band, we stretch it out, you know, we use this to describe elastic behavior. Stretch it, return it back to its original dimensions. Um, same thing, it's less obvious immediately what happens with a metal. You know, you can deform it a little bit and take it off and it's the same geometry as it was when you started. But at some point, you, you, know, you take it to too many sheets of paper and it starts to deform a little bit. You know, that wasn't a pretty strong uh, <laughs> paper clip. It, it, I thought it was going to deform more obviously than that. So let's uh, you know, hit it with a big hammer kind of thing. And there you go, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> it, it, that was too much deformation. It permanently deformed. So let's explore this in a little bit more detail. Okay, um, so here's what I want to do. Um, I want to think about this um, tensile test. Okay, so we've got this stress strain curve, and we're going to look at at this point, metals, okay, metals, and <clears throat> you'll recall that we had a curve that looked something like this, linear elastic, and then it deformed over like this, and then it fractured. Okay, so what I want to do is, well, how are we going to define this permanent deformation? And let's, in fact, get up there here, the title, permanent deformation. I think that's a fairly descriptive title, permanent. Uh, in fact, we could elaborate on one of the uh, possible definitions. If we want to come up with definitions, kind of like we did for elastic deformation, what would permanent deformation be? Well, permanent, I mean, it tells us that, and I think it should be fairly obvious, upon unloading, just like with this paper clip, right, I released the load and it did not go back to its original paper clip. I destroyed that paper clip. So we could say upon, upon, it's supposed to be an O, um, unloading, a sample does not return to original dimensions. And intuitively, that's a fairly good description. In practice, we're going to see that it's it's a little insufficient, but in, intuitively, it's not bad. Okay. Um, what else could we say then? Um, well, another way of, of explaining it, really a restatement of the first point there, is that uh, we'd say strain. If we just looked at the strain, strain does not return to zero upon unloading, right? Um, and finally, if we want to be consistent with what we, we discussed for, um, for um, elastic deformation, we could discuss what happens to the atoms. Right? The atoms must move to new uh, equilibrium positions move to new positions, right? They must. I mean, when I stretch this poor little paper clip, it physically changed shape macroscopically, so I had to have moved atoms. Uh, I certainly did. Atoms moved to new equilibrium positions or new positions. Um, in fact, you know what? I'm going to add in another one because when we were looking at this curve, we I think it's fairly intuitive to many, to, to you perhaps, that somewhere in that region, you know, near the end of the straight line, near the end of the straight line, is probably where it's going to deform. And that's actually accurate. Near end of linear region, the straight line, is probably where this permanent deformation is going to occur. And, and that is, as I said, that's accurate. Okay near end of linear. Not all that practical, it turns out, because it's very difficult to determine where that straight line is. But these are all reasonable intuitive descriptions for plastic deformation. Ah, I keep throwing in this word pl uh, plastic. So let's, let's cover that right now. Um, 
So permanent deformation is certainly this, this word that is um, intuitive to understand, and, and it's used sometimes. But more frequently, what is used is this term that I've, I've thrown in a little bit here, and that's plastic. Let me just give myself a little bit of room. Okay, plastic. Plastic deformation. And you may, you may look at that and think to yourself, why plastic? Does that refer to a material class, you know, metal, ceramics, and polymers? Uh, and in fact, it's certainly misleading in a way because the lay public uses the term plastic to mean polymer. But actually what plastic means um, is, is something a little different. It refers to the deformation. And you can impress your friends at your next party by the etymology of the word plastic in, in this context. And it is, in fact, from the Greek, uh, plastikos. All right, there you go. You'll be extremely popular at the parties. And you say that, uh, plastikos, right? It comes from plastikos, which meaning means um, to uh, shape or, or sculpt, right, um, permanently. And if, if this is not exciting enough for you, that is if, if uh, you know, a stress strain curve and permanent deformation there, it's the, it's the same plastic as in plastic surgery. So plastic surgery is the branch of, of surgery, uh, medical specialty involved uh, or uh, concerned with changing uh, structures, anatomical structures, whether for reconstructive purposes or elective cosmetic purposes, they certainly do use some polymeric materials, important polymers, uh, biodegradable polylactides and stuff, for example, in reconstructive surgery uh, for sutures and things like that. But that's not where the term plastic comes from. Plastic comes from the Greek plastikos. There you go. So impress your friends. And certainly when you hear me say plastic in this course, you'll know that I'm not referring to a material class, but instead I'm referring to <coughs> this permanent deformation.